As a roller coaster enthusiast, I like to talk about coasters 24 seven, but I literally have 38 credits. So that makes it hard not to talk about the same rides over and over again. So I'm going to talk about my top 25 bucket list coasters. But before we start, I need to clarify that all these coasters have to be hard to get to. Because if I just have a bunch of roller coasters within an hour's drive, I'll have the list done in less than a day. Also, it turns out that only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. But with that out of the way, number 25 is Phonix at Fair of Summerland. While it's not as intense as people had anticipated, the airtime still looks awesome. The first drop looks to provide sustained ejector airtime. The Immelman stall sort of thing appears to give crazy hang time. And I don't really mind it when coasters kind of hold back on the intensity. Plus, the color scheme is fantastic. I mean, just look at it. At the number 24 spot is the Intamin Megalite. Now, I know I said coasters, but I'm putting the whole model here because I don't want to be like, this version of the Megalite looks so much better because the key lift is half a mile an hour faster. Because that's just boring. But the Megalites actually look crazy. Some of the strongest airtime out there, fantastic pacing, just, it's a pretty polarizing model. So I could love it, or it could just be okay. Another clone coaster model is the Raptors, but not Jersey Devil or Flight of Courage, because they look good, but nowhere near as good as the originals. Anyways, sure they're really short, but you can't complain when it apparently pulls negative 2 Gs. I've also heard that they're kinda shaky, but sometimes that can add to the craziness of it. Next up is Expedition G-Force. Now this may seem low, but honestly, I don't really get the hype for this. Obviously, the first drop is probably one of the best in the world, but after that, it kind of just looks like airtime hills and turns, which I know that sounds a lot like RMCs, but the airtime hills don't really look that strong. I had to put this on the list though, because the reviews say that this is one of the best roller coasters in the world. Even Intamin themselves said it was their best work. Coaster Through the Clouds looks a lot like Expedition G-Force, but bigger. I'm sure if it wasn't in China, it would get so much more recognition. But as of now, I couldn't find any reviews. But the airtime looks even better than Expedition G-Forces. And that first drop looks even better than Expedition G-Forces. Sorry Expedition G-Force fans. But I'm gonna move on before I say Expedition G-Force one more time. Starting off the top 20 is Flying Aces. The restraints actually look good for a change. And while on video the pacing seems horrible, almost everybody unanimously agrees that it's way better than it seems. The airtime looks fantastic, plus the non-inverting loop seems illegal with the amount of laterals and ejector airtime it has. Dueling Dragons at Islands of Adventure is gone now, but Dueling Dragons at... I don't even want to try to pronounce that. Appears to be even better from dueling aspects you'd only find on Planet Coaster. The first coaster in the US I'm going to talk about is Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England. This is a very polarizing ride. Some people have this as one of the weakest RMCs, while others <coughs> have it at the very top. One thing's for sure though, the ejector on this looks crazy, but I'm really interested to see if I'd love this or just think it's okay. Going to Japan for their second best coaster, I think, is Hakuge. This one seems a lot like a smaller scale RMC, but scaled up. That sounded better in my head, but saying it out loud, whatever. You know RMC, insane ejector airtime with a few 0G rolls and a stall. Don't really have anything else to say, so... Karnan at Hansa Park has a lot of spoiler elements that I haven't seen, so I don't really have much to go off of. But the theming looks fantastic, along with some great airtime moments. Wow, I've said airtime a lot in this video. The airtime, airtime, airtime hills, airtime, 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 ejector airtime, airtime moments. Anyways, X2 is extreme. That was so bad. Please don't click off the video. But the ride certainly isn't, I think, delivering some of the wackiest sensations out there. There's nothing else to compare to except the S and S ones, but we'll get to that later. Number 14 is Taiga at Linen Maki. This appears to be a bit of an overrated ride, very well-rounded, and still very incredible, but a bit overrated. 
The inversions appear to be awesome, but the roller coasters higher on this list are just so good, I can't justify placing it above them. Something that has won the Golden Ticket Award five times is Superman the Ride. I know, I know, it's a lot like Expedition G-Force, but the negative Gs seem way stronger and more sustained. Plus, it's a really long ride. I've heard the restraints are abysmal, but it just looks so good I don't even care. Going back to China for the final time is Wood Coaster at Night Valley. Wood Coaster is basically steel vengeance, but purely made out of wood. And it looks insane! I love how the second drop is bigger than the first, and it just seems like it lasts for hours without losing any speed. Oh yeah, and also, no mid-course. The second Vekoma to make the list is Lek Coaster at Legendia. You know how I said Taiga's well-rounded? Well, that's an irregular heptadecagon compared to this. Why did I choose an irregular heptadecagon? Anyways, positive psychotic negative Gs. A literal corkscrew through the station, this ride has it all. At this point, the coasters are getting closer and closer to rankings, so this being at the number 11 spot is no knock against it. DC Rivals Hyper Coaster has kind of fallen under the radar for a lot of people, but it looks amazing. It features a lot of elements I've talked about earlier, like the twisted first drop and non-inverting loop, but DC Rivals just looks to do it the best out of all of them. Wildfire, from what I've heard, gives some of the best views you can find anywhere, rivaling coasters more than double its height. Also, even though it's not as much focused on airtime than some of the other RMCs, it's more well-rounded. With that level of wildness you'd find on a traditional Woody, mixed with the unhinged elements RMC comes up with, makes this a contender for one of the best roller coasters ever. FLI at Fantasia Land is just so fun to watch. Actually, before I start talking about Fly, be warned, I am going to nerd out. So skip to the time on screen if you want your ears to be saved. First off, the way this ride interacts with the buildings and pathways is astonishing. I could watch this ride zoom all day and never get bored of it. Also, the theming. Rookberg is a marvel of engineering, and just the queue line itself could be marketed as a ride, and it'd probably be one of the best attractions out there. I know that's a bit of a stretch, but it's an incredible queue, and then you get to the ride. If you thought Superman Ultimate Flight gave an incredible flying sensation, you're right, but this increases that by a thousand times. On this, you get launches, airtime, positives, graceful inversions. I mean, this ride is insane. Man, I really need to get to Fantasia Land someday. I really wish I could put this higher, but the top eight are probably eight of the 10 best roller coasters in the world or something like that. Conda at Wallaby Belgium has been growing on me ever since I first heard about it. And now it's in my top 10 bucket list coasters. And you know what? I'm glad. I've heard that the first drop gives some ridiculous airtime and laterals. The camelback and outer bank give sustained ejector. The non-inverting cobra roll, while not as good as everyone hoped, still looks fantastic. And then you have the wall stall, trick track double down, and death twisted chili underflip dog tongue stall loop. Oh yeah, and apparently the lift hill pulls negative 0.3 Gs, so that's pretty cool too. If you've seen my top 25, you know I like BNMI birds a lot more than most people. So naturally, a few are going to make my bucket list. And the first one is Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland. I love sustained floater airtime so much, and that's basically all this ride does. Sure, there's a few dead spots, but dead spots really don't take away much for me. So earlier, I said there was going to be the SNS 4th Dimension, and here it is. While the other coasters I've talked about, like Kanda and Fly, focus on quality, this ride is just psychotic. I don't even know how this model exists. It fixes every problem with X2. It's smoother, more chaotic. I mean, you almost go upside down on the brake run. And then you also have whatever this is. And this. And this. And this. And then you literally have a front flip on the drop. Few coasters make me scared anymore, but this one definitely has a chance of doing that. An even better BNM Hyper than Behemoth is Shambhala. It's smoother, taller, faster, and has even better airtime. Don't really have anything else to say about this ride, so, uh... If you took Steel Vengeance and squashed it down to around 120 feet tall, you would get untamed. Each hill gives wonderful ejector, with the most inversions on any hybrid coaster. A super steep drop over a minute of prime ride time, I mean, what else could you ask for? 
Taking the number two spot is Zadra at Energylandia. Everybody compares this ride to Iron Guazi, which is my number one overall, and a lot of people prefer this to Iron Guazi, and I can totally see why. The first drop in Outer Bank looked just as good, if not even better than Iron Guazi's. The stall is so elongated, then you have a super whippy wave turn, floaty camelback, and deranged twisted hill at the end, making this something every coaster enthusiast should have at the top of their bucket list. Earlier, I was saying that Conda and FLY focused on quality, while the 4th Dimension coasters focus on making you feel like you're gonna die. Well, what happens when you combine those? You get Ride to Happiness at Plops of Landapan. Somehow, this has super powerful launches, even though it's made by Mach. You get negative 1.7 Gs on the first drop, a banana roll, and a flying snake dive just to name a few. Theming, on-ride audio, a super short line, and just a beautiful ride in general. Like, look at it! Puts this on a whole nother level of roller coasters. Will I ever ride these coasters? Hopefully someday. But if you've ridden them, tell me in the comments whether they're underrated or overrated. But with that, I'll see you guys later.